Hi everyone, I absolutely love negative space and minimalist compositions. Okay, so I'd like to show you what I do to add these two elements together to create really dramatic images. So what I'm gonna do first of all is just uh, go over to my uh, Lightroom collection. And here's the shot. This is a shot I took a couple months ago in Tokyo of the famous Gracery Hotel in a place called Shinjuku. And the reason it's famous is because it is home to, yes, you guessed it, Godzilla, the life-size version uh, replica of Godzilla. Really interesting if you get a chance to see it if you're in Japan. So what I have here is two-thirds of just a bunch of nothing. It's pure white sky. And this white sky we often call negative space. And negative space is a device, a compositional device, that really pushes the attention to the main subject. Now in this case, the main subject is the building. It's the Gracery Hotel. So if possible, whenever you have especially like a, an overcast sky that isn't very attractive, try to make use of that. You know, a lot of people avoid photography when it's dull and gray and overcast because they feel that they can't really do anything interesting. Well, why not sort of shift your mentality to sort of pursue a minimalist aesthetic? Okay, so what I have here is, um, is sort of a composition that obeys the classical rule of thirds, where the building, the hotel, is on the right third, and we have two-thirds of negative space, emptiness. And this would be a, cl a classically uh, acceptable composition. Now, you don't have to completely obey that. Negative space can occupy 90% of the picture. It doesn't matter. In fact, a lot of classic Chinese and Japanese paintings, 90% of the image is pure white, and you have a, a little crane, maybe, flying through the sky. In any case, what you're wanting to do is allow the negative space to push people to the main subject. Now, another thing, whenever we're dealing with minimalism, especially if we want to create an abstract where people are confused and linger on your picture longer, we want to avoid any sense of scale. So on this, uh, this building, I, if, I'm, if I recall, it's to the right of the building, there was a big sign that said Gracery Hotel. Well, we don't want that. We want to avoid that because we don't want to give away any indication of how large the space is. This could be, who knows, this could be a small model uh, of Lego. It could be part of a car. It could be a huge skyscraper. We don't know initially. And that's a real good sign that your picture has a little bit of... Um, Momentum is when people are confused, when they linger on your picture longer. Okay, so we want, we want to avoid any signage, we want to avoid any sense of scale. Okay, next up is, this is the original. It's a little bit, uh, the composition is fine, but it's a little bit blah. It was a bluish day, a little bit of haze. And um, so really, if there's not much to go on color-wise in a picture, why not just get rid of the color? So what we're going to do is go simply to black and white. And in Lightroom CC, it's as easy as tapping on the black and white button. And uh, interestingly, if you have a, a picture that has a lot of color, you may want to play around with the color channel mixer, which is right here. However, because our original picture did not have much color, as you can see here, it's just blue, the color channel mixer won't do us much good. So that's why we're just simply going to black and white. Okay, so that's fine. And uh, with regards to this shot, um, I feel that this is really as far as I want to take it. I don't feel I need to move, um, change anything at all. I really like it as it is. It's a good minimalist shot. Okay, so just to sum up, whenever we're wanting to really push the viewer's attention to the main subject, make use of negative space. It's two thirds or more of just nothing. Could be a blank wall, could be anything. Anything that doesn't have much detail or no detail, ideally. And then on your, your main subject, try to avoid any sense of scale if you are dealing with uh, an object that's very large or very small. And the value of this is that it confuses the viewer, which in turn allows them to linger on your picture longer, which is always a good thing, okay? So remove the signage, remove anything that would allow us to indicate, sort of, which would show the people just how big the space is or how small, okay? So that's it. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, also, I just uploaded a bunch of new Japan photos from Nagano, Tokyo, and Kyoto. I'd love for you to see them at my portfolio. That's www.mark.com 
markhemmings.com. That's M-A-R-K-H-E-M-M-I-N-G-S.com. I'd love for you to check them out. And also, if you have any questions or comments, please uh, leave them below. And especially, I'm really happy to answer questions, so feel free to do so. I really enjoy teaching photography almost as much as I enjoy taking images and editing. Okay, so have a great day, happy editing, and happy photography.